Okay. Do we have just about everybody? We'll go ahead and get started. Okay. Thank y'all for joining us today. Um, we wanted to come with to, to you to answer some questions that have been asked recently regarding our classes and our return to campus. So before we, or we're, let's go ahead and just dive into it. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Alsabrook. Thank you, Dr. Sanders, and good morning to all our guests. Let me thank you for, first of all, for, for making it through the spring of 2020. What a historic semester in higher education caused by the COVID virus, and all of you survived and made it, and let me congratulate you for, for making it through that very difficult transition. You were to be rewarded. The things you learned in the classroom are obviously important, but the life lessons you learned and that we learned together and how to survive and make it through a pandemic will take you a long way in life. So let me congratulate you for, for making it through the COVID pandemic in the spring semester of 2020 at East Mississippi Community College. We're glad that you're back. We're glad that you're coming back. We want you to know that we are putting every measure possible in place to make this a safe semester. The fall, we want the safe, we want this fall semester to be as safe as possible so that you can enjoy your college experience like you normally would, but while also trying to keep you safe from the, from the pandemic and the COVID crisis. So we're excited that you're considering coming back to East Mississippi Community College. We will help answer any questions that you may have about the fall through this team of experts that we have online, our, our administrative team at East Mississippi Community College. So again, let me thank you for, for considering and, and coming back to East Mississippi Community College. We look forward to seeing you in the fall and hopefully a very good semester that uh, where, where you'll be stay on your path to success and achieving your educational goals. With that, Dr. Sanders, again, I wanna say thank you for having me this morning. I look forward to listening and hearing the questions. Melanie, I think you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just wanted to tell you that we miss seeing all of our students on campus. We know that you're the heart of the college and we can't wait to see you in a few weeks. Just a few items to note from me. We do have someone responding to your questions in the chat box. So if we don't answer your particular question, please drop us a note and we'll provide you an answer. Another note is that there's still time to register for summer classes for our second intensive summer. So if you need to squeeze in one more class, please go ahead and contact our advising center and we'll be happy to assist you. And we're on the lookout for some great ambassadors for the upcoming school year. If you would like to apply for one of these uh, positions, please contact Julia Morrison and through email at jmorrison2 at eastms.edu and she'll be glad to talk with you about that opportunity as well as send you an application. So let's get started. And the first person that we'd like to introduce you to is Dr. Rush. He's our Vice President for Instruction and he's going to discuss some of the classes for both the summer and the fall terms. Dr. Rush. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to say how uh, um, thankful I am for this opportunity to converse with our students again. It has seemed um, to have been some time since we've had this opportunity. So we're very excited here at MCC to have this opportunity to interact with our students and answer any questions that you all may have. Um, as Dr. Sanders said, I would talk with you briefly about our summer and our fall offerings. Um, as you know, many of you are already registered for summer intensive one and our full-time online classes. What we would like to remind you is, it's still time to register for second intensive summer um, if you have not already done so. Um, actually, um, something that we would like to announce and we will be um, advertising on the website very soon is we're going to not only have our second intensive campus synchronous um, summer classes this that starts um, on June 29th, but we're also going to be starting our first um, July term of online classes. So not only will you be able to do synchronous um, face-to-face -face live meeting with your instructors via Zoom uh, for our uh, July set for our second summer session. We will also have an opportunity for you to register for traditional online classes as well. 
Um, as Dr. Osbrooks and Dr. Sanders have already mentioned, something else that we're also excited to talk about is having you back on campus um, this fall. We're very excited about bringing you all back to campus and we are already planning for instructional uh, needs to be different, but we're expecting for you to get the same experiences with your instructors, with your peers. Um, also, we're gonna be bringing new um, learning pedagogy um, to the classroom. Um, our faculty will be engaging in new professional development opportunities and seeing what other institutions are doing to make it safe for our students, but um, making sure that we provide them with significant learning experiences so you could be successful as you transfer to the university as well as going to the workforce. So we're excited. Um, classes here at EMCC um, will be um, filling up quickly, as you already know. So if you have not taken the opportunity to register um, for second intensive and for your fall classes, please make sure that you email your advisor. If you don't know who your advisor is, please email our advising center at advising at eastmiss.edu. And we will make sure that we get um, back with you in a very timely manner so we can make sure that we get you registered either for those summer classes and or summer and fall intensive too. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Thank you. Um, up next, we've got Dr. Taylor, and she's going to talk a little bit about our manufacturing classes. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. So I am excited to be talking with you all today, and I'm looking forward to having you all back on campus this fall. Uh, as Dr. Rush said, I think uh, we're, we're taking the precautions necessary to make sure you can, you can come on campus as long as possible. We've got some exciting things in the works for you. Uh, we need to get you registered, first of all, because you all have classes that you need to take, and uh, now's the time to go ahead and get registered to make sure you get the classes that you want. Uh, we are working to expand different types of software and things of that nature so that you'll be able to do a little bit of work from both here and from home if you need to, to some rewindable learning, things of that nature to help support you. Uh, as you learn all of the things uh, in your programs to be able to complete and go to work. Uh, we have plenty of employers who are looking to hire people, so we are looking forward to having you here and providing that contact for you and getting you uh, ready as quickly as possible to get into the workforce. A um, couple of little housekeeping things that we need from you all is Make sure that you get with the business office, settle anything you need to settle, get your schedule finalized as quickly as possible. Again, let's make sure you get the classes that you need um, and that you want. Um, let's make sure that you have checked off your financial aid and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but the big thing too is, is make sure you're connecting with our navigators with Miss Tanise or Miss Greta and let them work with you and make sure that we get everything handled that we need to handle. Um, we have a lot of exciting labs planned for the fall in person, and um, I think, you know, those of you in the community university programs, we're excited to have you back for another year. Um, those of you in SCUBA and GT campus, we're also getting ready to get some exciting things for you to come back. So um, with that, I'll turn that over to Melanie, and we'll move on. Great. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. And I know several people have been wanting to know what we're going to do about dorms in the, the fall term, so... Dean Montgomery, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, look, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tony Montgomery, and I'm the Dean of Students on the Scuba Campus. Um, 95 days ago, you left our campuses to go home for spring break, and here we are today on a Zoom call. And to be honest with you, about four months ago, I didn't even know what a Zoom call was. Um, but this is what I do know. I know that each and every one of you have been greatly missed. And we are so excited about getting you back on our campuses in August. Uh, every year when I meet with our students on the scuba campus, I meet with both parents and students during our orientations. And I tell, I tell every one of them that the most important job I have is to, as the dean is to keep every student on our campus safe to the best of my ability. And I'm here to tell you for the last 90 days, that's exactly what the staff here at EMCC has been working on. And that is what we will continue to work on until the day you arrive back on our campus. COVID-19 will have changed the way our campuses will look and will alter our daily routines. You're gonna see signs everywhere about practicing social distancing and proper techniques to washing your hands. 
you're, you're going to see stickers on the ground, show you where to stand while you're waiting in a line. You're going to see me walking around campus wearing a mask with our logo. on. All these things along with others will be put in place to keep you safe. And we need you to help in following these instructions to keep you and everyone around you safe. Yes, COVID-19 will have changed our campuses in many ways, but what it has not changed is the MCC's mission toward our students, to keep you safe in everything we do and to make your time on our campus the best it can be. Um, every residence hall will be back up and running uh, for the fall semester. Housekeeping has spent countless hours deep cleaning every room and bathroom, along with cleaning the carpets and waxing the floors to have everything ready for your return in August. So returners, go ahead, get those schedules filled out and contact the housing department to get your room reserved and follow me back to EMCC. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you so much. The other question that we get asked quite often is what's going on with athletics? So I'm going to turn that over to Coach Thompson and Mr. Wood and let them talk a little bit about what's going on in that area. All right. Hey, everybody. I am Marcus Wood, the Executive Director of Advancement and Athletics, and I'm with Sharon Thompson, our Athletic Director and Head Women's Coach. We're honored to be with you today, excited about uh, having the chance to get you back on campus. And, of course, big concerns like uh, Dean Montgomery just mentioned, everybody else has mentioned are the safety concerns, and that's just a pressing issue for us. And of course, our fan base and, and making sure that everything that we do is is, is putting them in a, in a good environment. So, now our daily planning meetings have covered a wide variety of scenarios as we take into account the latest CDC findings as well as recommendations from our governor. But we did want to go ahead and address, with that being said, a few frequently asked questions that our line families had. The first one that we had was our, our summer camps. Are we still having our athletic summer camps and are the events on our campus canceled? Unfortunately, yes, we are uh, canceled for the summer. We are not having our summer camps uh, doing with athletics. We are starting to phase back in our employees in June, and hopefully we can start bringing some small groups in by appointment to help with the registration, but we're not having our summer athletic camps. So that's just a kind of an unfortunate deal with everything going on. And I'm thinking over well, well, probably the number one question is, are we planning on having athletics this fall? Well, absolutely we are. We're looking at our regular schedule, uh, schedule as well as planned schedules and meeting with fellow administrators, our commissioner, uh, Commissioner Martin throughout the state and friends and colleagues from other universities and, and, and colleges and throughout the nation. The, NG, the NJCA has a uh, meeting on June 19th where they're going to decide the fate of the fall sports. So we would know more after June 19th as far as the fate of fall sports. And you know, we've been getting asked a lot, is there going to be a football season? Well, the, there's a lot of proposals on the table in different scenarios. And some are just like maybe pushing, possibly pushing the football season back by two weeks. But we would know all of this as far as after June 19th, once the NJCA has their big meeting. Right now, though, tentatively, we're still set for opening kickoff on August 27th, unless something changes. So our plans are to move forward with that. Now, with the kickoff date being set, of course, one of the other questions that we're asked a lot are our student athletes. Are they going to be allowed to take summer courses and help them graduate earlier on time? Because we've had a pretty good record of being able to get our athletes on to the next level. And the answer to that is absolutely yes. We'll offer, like uh, Dr. Rush mentioned earlier, both traditional online courses and synchronous online course models to kind of accommodate all of our student athletes while we're phasing our, our uh, instructors back and while we're getting back into a face-to-face -face, uh, instruction. But yes, we will be business as usual. You can stay up to date on the latest EMCC findings and news and events by visiting our website, www.eastms.edu. And thank you guys for allowing us to share in your day. And we will pass the ball to Danielle Hobson and Tawana Bauer in admissions. Hello, everybody. Um, Tawana Bauer here, Associate Director of Admissions on the Golden Triangle Campus. Greetings from our admissions office as well as our line central staff. Um, we all know life has not been the same, but EMCC life has definitely not been the same. Um, campus is just, it's just, uh, 
it's just dead around here. And we miss you guys so much. We miss the hustle and bustle, the chitter chit chat of the students, you guys playing cards together in the union, the cafeteria on chicken and fish day. We miss all of that so much. And so we want you guys to know that we are so excited to have you back on campus. Um, just a little bit of an update from admissions. Uh, if you are a returning or current returning student with us and you've been with us for a semester or a year, then there's really not much you need to do with admissions at this point. You're set to go to just continue on. However, if you are a brand new student just admitted with us, um, you may see that there's an admissions hold on your account. So check with us to see if there's a transcript, um, updated transcript or something to that nature, uh, an item that you may need to send us to get your account updated and that hold can be taken off. Um, and really other than that, um, if we, we want you to know too, to tell all your friends if they have not applied or um, registered that now's the time to do that. Uh, we have waived ACT scores for incoming uh, students. And so that if you know any of your friends who were nervous about that, they haven't taken their ACT score or they didn't think they had the ACT score they needed. Um, as far as admissions, we have waived ACT scores. So you can get admitted. Um, and I'm sure one of our advisors is gonna talk more about um, still needing ACT for certain placements. But as far as admissions, you do not have to have an ACT score. Um, so if you have any questions on the uh, Golden Triangle campus, you can call 662-243-1920. Uh, the SCUBA campus is 662-476-5079. Those numbers are listed on our website. Another helpful tool is our admissions checklist on our website. Um, but we miss you guys so much. And if you have any questions, just uh, send it in the chat and we'll be happy to um, answer those questions for you. Thanks, Dr. Sanders. Thank you. And I know that there's probably some questions out there about the CARES Act and financial aid for the upcoming terms. So we have our Director of Financial Aid, Gary Jones, with us, and I think he's going to talk to us a little bit about that. Gary, I think you're muted. Got it. Good to have each of you here. Uh, I was just saying, I can't see anybody other than our staff, so I don't know if anybody's out there or not. It's kind of like speaking to a, uh, in, our, in our church meetings, we've had you know our pastor up there and those that were speaking, but they're speaking to nobody, at least that they can see. So hopefully you're out there and I'm sure you are. Good to have you. Uh, my name again is Gary uh, Jones uh, and on behalf of uh, my staff and, and as Tawana said, Lion Central, uh, we are glad to be able to talk with you and chat with you and hopefully answer some of your questions and give you some information that will help you get ready to get into school, either for summer or for this fall. Uh, just the first thing that you need to be sure and do if you have not already done so, be sure to complete the FAFSA. Okay, if you're coming to summer school and have not done that, you go out to the, uh, the website is studentaid.gov or you could Google FAFSA, just be sure that if you do that, you get to the right site. It's always free. If you come up to one that says it's gonna charge you, don't go to that one. It's free to complete the FAFSA, studentaid.gov. So if you're coming to summer and haven't done that, be sure to complete the 1920 application. For fall, it's the 2021. Both options are there, so be sure to complete the correct year. Uh, it takes about three days for us to get the information once it com it's, it's completed. And once we do, if we have to respond to you with any other information that we need to complete your file, we will send that to you via postal mail. Postal mail. So you'll hear from us if we need anything additional, respond to that as quickly as you can. Get that back to us. Postal mail, drop it off at the campus uh, if you're allowed to do that. Uh, and uh, we'll get you uh, uh, situated and, and awarded as quickly as we can. 
Uh, now, we're going to have a couple of FAFSA days, and I believe I'm correct. Madeline, you just correct me if I'm wrong. But next week, we're going to have two days, Wednesday uh, and uh, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, where we'll, there'll be a Zoom meeting. We'll be able to help you to, uh, uh, to complete the FAFSA, and we'll also do that again the following week on Wednesday and Thursday of the 24th and 25th. So there are four days coming up. If you really need some individualized help, you can sign up for that and we'll help you. Also, there's another resource that you can use uh, in our state called Get to College. Get the number two and college. Uh, that's .org, .org. They can also give you individualized help. You can make an appointment with them and they will be glad to walk you through uh, the FAFSA and how to complete it and help you with any issues that you may have. Uh, just one quick thing about the FAFSA and with the pandemic that we have been going through here recently. If for some reason, now I'm talking right now about the upcoming fall uh, and spring semesters. If for some reason, you and or your parents were adversely affected with their income for the 2020 uh, uh, fiscal year, then you need to go ahead and complete the FAFSA just like it says to do after you complete it and you know that you had some issues or your parents did for their 2020 income, they lost their job or whatever happened and the income is significantly lower, then you need to contact us because we can do some things to help you possibly get uh, financial aid maybe that you weren't able to get uh, prior uh, to this pandemic. So be sure and reach out to us if you have any kind of issues like that with your income. Okay, um, now once you are awarded any kind of federal, state, or institutional uh, funds, those funds will go towards your direct cost at the institution, your tuition and your fees. If you have any funds that remain uh, from your Pell Grant, from your state aid, from your institutional aid, you can use that in the bookstore to get your books and any needed supplies for your program. So just keep that in mind uh, that, that you, you, could, you have that there available to help you. Okay, scholarships. Now I'm talking about fall. Be sure and go to our website if you haven't done so already, eastmiss.edu, go to the financial aid page, be sure to complete the application for the uh, scholarship that, that you're interested in. Now, uh, Tawana did mention that uh, we are waiving the ACT score for admissions, but that is not true for scholarships. If you want to be considered for an ACT scholarship, you have to have an ACT com composite score on file. The score has to be at least a 20. Uh, that will get you some scholarship at EMCC. So be sure if you haven't completed the ACT yet, you, you've got time to do that. Just be able to get that done. We offer it here on campus. Uh, just call call the school and ask for that department and they will be able to set you up to get the uh, to get that ACT uh, on file with us. Um, now for scholarships, we require 15 hours or more. That's not true of federal aid. For full time for federal aid, that's 12 hours. That's for Pell Grant. You get the full time award. You don't have to be in 12 hours to get Pell Grant, but that's the full time award. For scholarships, it's different. You must be in at least 15 hours. However, there is an exception to that for our career technical programs because some of those programs, their curriculum does not call for 15 hours. It calls for maybe 12. But you have to be in at least 12 hours, even in a career technical program, to get scholarships. We know what programs they are. You just go ahead and, and, and enroll in whatever CT program that you're eligible for to complete the scholarship. We will work out the, the details on getting the uh, the ACT school uh, uh, EMC ACT scholarship awarded for you. Um, state aid. Now that's uh, msfinancialaid.org, msfinancialaid.org. That's your MTAG, that's your MESG. If you have not completed the state aid application, there is a September 15 deadline for that for the upcoming year. Be sure to go uh, out to their website and complete that. Uh, the requirements for that is at least a 15 ACT, 2.5 GPA for MTAG, and a three point for MESG. So be sure and complete that application if you haven't done so. Um, and let's see, you need to familiarize yourself with all of the rules and the regulations 
that surround any kind of aid that we give you, whether it's federal, institutional, or state, for renewal purposes. So if you come and we give you an award and a scholarship for this year, uh, if you want that to be renewed for the next year, you need to be sure and meet certain criteria during this particular uh, award year, a GPA and so forth. Um, the uh, just speak real quickly now. Ms. Holmes is going to speak to some of the CARES funding a little bit later here, but just about the CARES funding, the CARES Act funding for summer. If you're enrolled in summer school and you have completed the FAFSA for the 1920 academic year, then you will get some CARES fund money that will not go to your school bill, that will be sent directly to you. Uh, now, if you want to turn around and use it on your school bill, that's fine. Uh, that uh, the award amounts have not yet been established. We're waiting till all the enrollment takes place and to find out how much money we still have available to use. And then we will start uh, packaging those particular funds according to the enrollment that you have. Three hours, six hours, nine hours, whatever it may be. The more hours you have, the more money you will get in the CARES, CARES funding. At this point, there aren't any CARES funds available for the fall unless Congress decides to go ahead and uh, add more to that uh, that they've already done and they will let the institutions know. If that happens, then we will, I guess, cross that bridge when that happens and we'll, we'll let you know how to go about that. The key to that though is for now, you have to have a FAFSA on file for us to be able to award you the CARES. You don't have to be eligible for any kind of Title IV aid money like Pell, you just have to complete the FAFSA and meet those requirements, okay? So as always, if you have any kind of questions uh, for Alliance Central Financial Aid or admissions, be sure to call us at 243-1920, that's your GT, 243-1920, and in the SCUBA campus, that's 476-5079. Good talking with you. Thanks, Mr. Jones, I appreciate that. And let's just go ahead and keep talking about money and we're gonna turn it over to Ms. Holmes and let her tell us a little bit more from the business office. Thank you, Dr. Sanders. Hi, my name is Tammy Holmes and I currently serve as the Chief Financial Officer for East Mississippi Community College. Our institution's motto is opportunity starts here. And with that being said, with us being able to help you um, see those opportunities come to fruition, we provide and work with uh, Mr. Garrett Jones and his office in the financial aid collaboratively to be able to make college affordable for you to be able to achieve those goals and make sure you're able to have the best opportunity, a jump start to uh, reaching those goals that you have both for education and career wise. So in order to help make that, that those opportunities affordable, we do have and been a recipient of the CARES money, which is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Stimulus Funds that Congress have appropriated billions of dollars for institutions to help students offset some of the uh, institutional costs in them attending college during this pandemic crisis. Um, and one of the appropriations um, that East Mississippi has been afforded lately has been the Minority Serving Institution Funds. That is a grant fund that will allow us to help you offset the cost of your tuition, your course materials, and your tech fees. There's only one of two things that you must do in order to be eligible for those funds. You must, one, either demonstrate eligibility by completing the FAFSA and that we and the institution has received the results of your FAFSA or financial aid application, or two, you must attest on the penalty of perjury that you meet the requirements of section 484. Also, also to help make uh, college affordable for you during this uh, coronavirus pandemic, um, EMECC is also taking an, an extra step in uh, for those students who wanna register and enroll with us, but you have an account balance. But if you have an account balance that is less than $500, uh, we will allow you to uh, enroll. Uh, your counselor just would need us would need to contact us to have the hold removed, and we will ensure that you're able to enroll and move forward. If you owe more than five hundred dollars, we also offer an opportunity where you can pay that balance down to five hundred dollars or less via cash, money order, uh, debit, or credit card, and we will still afford you the same opportunity to enroll and move forward uh, with your education for the fall. 
Um, also, we want to say to the students that our best deal here is the 15 to 19 hours if you're registered. Um, our tuition is billed at a flat right rate if you're enrolled between 15 to 19 hours. Below 15 hours, you're billed at um, a per hour rate. Above 19 hours, you, are, uh, you can incur additional charges. So we want you to take advantage of the best deal, what we call the money deal here, is if you're enrolled with 15 to 19 hours. So we would encourage you to do that um, to make your dollars go a little further. Also, we want to remind you that if you are residing on campus and you will be meeting on Captain's Housing, please make sure you come by the business office to select your meal plan. Also, you will also need to come by the business office if you're needing uh, student ID and decals for uh, campus use. Also, if you are a student and you need us to build your company or you need to take advantage of your college savings plan, please make sure you uh, contact the business office each semester and we will assist in making sure that that bill is uh, submitted to the correct um, institution. Also, finally, we want to say that if you are a student, you'll be able to view your fall 2020 financial aid information on LEO beginning July 31st. However, your housing and meal charges will not be included until you checked in at the SCUBA campus. If you need more assistance uh, about your account, uh, please feel free to contact the business office at 662-243-2606. Again, that's 662-243-2606. And just remember that we are here to help and every day we're taking care of business but especially your business. Go Lions. Thank you so much. Now, I know everybody's getting excited and we wanna know what's our next step so that we can get in on all this wonderful thing, everything that's going on at EMCC. So we're gonna turn it over to Dr. Sansing and he's gonna tell us how we need to register for classes. Dr. Sansing. All right, thank you, Melanie. Um, like others have said, I wanna bring you greetings from our counseling and advising staff. Um, again, like others have said, we miss the energy that you as students bring to our counseling and advising centers. That energy just feeds off of each other. I think like Tawana said, we miss seeing you around doing all the things you do and especially coming into the counseling and advising center and working with our um, counselors and advisors. However, in the meantime, we have all adjusted to working remotely and serving you to um, build your schedules uh, register you for classes, adjust your schedules if we need to, and we will certainly continue to do that. So our advisors are, um, they're prepared to help remotely. If you have any questions about your um, schedule, as Dr. Rush mentioned, or if you have any questions about your advisor, we encourage you to reach out to them um, and they will schedule a time to um, review your schedule, review your academic record, uh, register you for second term summer classes or your fall classes. Uh, they will schedule a time by Zoom, uh, email, phone. Um, they are, uh, they some, sometimes work with appointments so they can schedule appointments with you. Um, just reach out to your advisor. And as Dr. Rush said, if you don't know who your advisor is, email us at advising at eastmiss.edu. East and then someone will reach out to you to um, direct you to your advisor or um, create a schedule for you. Um, I think someone mentioned ACT and while ACT has been waived as a requirement to enter school, um, it does still apply to uh, classes that have it as a prerequisite. So if you have any questions about that, you can contact us again at our advising email or you can call our advising um, desk number, which is 662-243-1925. And somebody will be staffing that phone and we'll get back to you if um, you need to leave a message or um, they're helping someone else and they need to call you back. Um, so we just, we want you to know that as we approach fall, we'll be particularly reaching out to um, our fall students to uh, schedule your classes and get you prepared uh, for the fall. Uh, we do have some faculty advisors who, have, who are helping this summer and they may be reaching out to you as well. So we hope you feel like multiple people may be contacting you because as others have said, 
uh, we're excited to have you back on campus and we want to help serve you any way we can uh, through our advising services. So uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Dr. Sanders and, um, and, uh, and Julia. Thank y'all so much. And I'm just going to open it back up to anybody that was on the panel. If there was any last minute information you wanted to share, would love to hear from you. Well, Melanie, I will say, I think, Tammy, you maybe had mentioned this, but the uh, the financial aid, uh, what we call our LEO account, you're able to go out now. If you've been awarded for fall, uh, you should be able to see that award if you have set up your LEO account. So if you haven't done that, be sure to set up your LEO account, and then you'll be able to see all of your financial aid information out there, view it and print it and so forth. Okay, thank y'all so much for joining us. And I know that several questions have been answered in our chat box. Uh, Ms. Morrison, if you have any additional questions, our campus numbers are 662-476-5000 or 662-243-1900. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thanks so much. Have a great day.